ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. It is Wednesday, May 27th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone lines, 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Miller Lite hold true great taste. Only 96 calories it is. The original light beer coming up this afternoon on the program. 5.30 or so, we're going to hear from Jared West because today... He announced that he is returning to Marshall for his senior season. He has removed his name from the 2020 NBA draft. And I think that's a good move on his part. It was a good move to put his name out there and to get some consideration. We're going to find out what that process looked like amidst a pandemic. It's a different process. What happened? What did he get to take advantage of? If anything, what did he not get a take advantage of? I kind of want to hear everything. So we're going to talk to him. He's coming up about 5.30 get his thoughts on the whole thing. Now, we've got some bad news today for high school football fans. We've got to start with this. North-South football game, which was set for noon. It was July 11th when they were going to play this thing. And it was at South Charleston. Now, it's canceled. And, of course, The reason being is because concerns about the coronavirus pandemic. We just don't know where we're going to be in July. We don't know where we're going to be in August. We don't know where we're going to be in September. There are cases on the rise. Some states are flattening the curve. Some states are holding steady. Some states are increasing in cases. We just don't know where we're going to be right now. And West Virginia has been a little bit more fortunate than some states. To be quite honest, the infection rate here is very low. But still, there is a concern. So that has been halted. And again, you got to look out for the kids. And I know it's an emotional time for these kids right now. I mean, if you're a 2020 senior right now, years from now, you're going to look back on this time and you might look back at it differently. But today, as a kid who didn't get their graduation, didn't get their final time at high school, didn't get to do this, didn't get to participate in sports for that final time. Some kids had their season ripped away from them. I mean, I understand completely. It's just like another body blow to a lot of these kids who perform at a high level, and then all of a sudden they get to not do it anymore. They're told, okay, you're done. It just take it away from you. And these kids had, of course, stay up, try to stay in shape best they could. Some of these kids, this might have been their final opportunity to play And an organized event like this, for some of these kids, they're going to be moving on. They're going to have a college career, be it at a higher level or a lower level. doesn't matter. They're still going to continue their athletic career. So there's opportunities for some of these kids. For others, maybe not so much. So it's a big deal. It really is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's an opportunity that's been taken away for these kids. So And they're going to feel it a little differently than maybe you and I do. We, we feel bad for these kids. These kids just feel bad right now, I'm sure. And it's very disappointing because it's a moment that they don't get back. I mean, honestly, that's the sadness here. It's, it's a moment that because of health concerns, which take precedent, unfortunately for these kids, you've got to sacrifice. And it's not fair. And I understand completely, and you know, I, I'm not even trying to rationalize what's going on in, in these kids' minds right now, but at the end of the day, you've got to take health and safety concerns, and you've got to put those above everything else. And hopefully these kids move on. They have opportunities that will make this just look like a, a little bump on the road. And so you know, I feel bad for them. I really do. It's, it's unfortunate. And you hate, to, you hate to take things away from kids. You really do. And maybe they can come back. Maybe there's an opportunity for them in the future. I don't know what that's going to look like, or they can be honored differently. Maybe there's a process. Instead of just playing the game, they can come back, be honored differently, find a way to to really make a moment for these kids. I mean, But they're not going to get this moment. This moment is gone. They're not going to have this. And we don't know what the basketball game is going to look like, if that's going to be pulled as well. But you can read more about it. Charleston Gazette's first place to have this story today, so you can check that out and, and follow up there. A lot of things, though, 
are still up in the air. We just don't know. We, we don't know. We can't figure it out yet. And that's really the big concern is just not knowing. And here's another thing that got dinged. The basketball tournament, $2 million tournament. We've talked to John Elmore about this. We talked to Odd Elmore. And they've got their team, heard that, heard alumni. And they were going to be able to play in Charleston because Charleston was going to be a regional hub. It was going to be a place where some games were going to be played as these teams advance and move on. Because, let's be honest, there was some appetite for this among especially WVU fans. They had a great entry in the last tournament. And so there was an appetite and there was interest. And so Charleston was able to capitalize on that. Unfortunately now, it's not going to happen, at least in the way we thought it was going to happen. Because, again, reporting today coming out of the Charleston Gazette, Derek Red on top of this one. The basketball tournament, the announcement today is that they're going to condense their format from nine regional sites to one central location. And again, this is all due to the pandemic concerns there. Maybe they don't have the safety measures in place that they feel they need to across nine spots. And I get that. If you're going to pull this off, you're going to put it in one area, one central location. You can minimize travel. You don't have players traveling from one site to another. You can lock down on one arena. Now, Charleston's not out of the mix. Charleston's not out of the mix. They've thrown in their name. It's in the hat now. Maybe they can be the host site for this tournament. Now, that would be a great event. I don't know how it's going to play off with everything that has to go into this as far as health concerns, lodging, You know, there's a lot of logistics that have got to go on here to make this thing happen, depending on where the host site's going to be. But still, there is that opportunity for this to be played. And it would be, I think, great television. And that's what we're looking for right now. We want to have content back on television. The question here is, can we get that content without risking someone's health and well-being? That's the question. The question is, has a little bit more time to be answered for college football. We're we're at that point now. We've got some time. The NHL, they're going to play when they're ready. They believe they're going to push the regular season back for next year. I'm okay with that. That's understandable. We can push that back. What's that going to look like? I don't know, but they've got an opportunity here to try to figure that out and make it happen. And then baseball, I don't even know what the story is with baseball. If we're going to have teams in their own stadiums, are we going to have maybe a condensed grouping of of host sites? If that's going to be maybe a plan that gets forwarded, because I don't know when that opens up. When does that open up? And then the NBA, the NBA is going to happen. It seems like they've got an idea. We're going to be in one location, ESPN's Wide World of Sports facility. Disney's involved. Disney's confident that they can maybe open the parks back up a little bit. Time will tell, but still, they've got a plan, they feel. And if the NBA locates to a campus environment, that's going to be a lot better than trying to quarantine in place in a host city or in a hub city hotel. If you're going to be on a campus, a controlled campus, you can bring your family. It's going to be a better experience for them. NBA... They've been a little quiet, but they seem to have a plan still. Don't know when this is going to actually take off. Same thing for hockey. But with football, football's got some time. College football. These high school events, though, you hate to see it happen. But you just don't have enough time. I don't think you can pull it off in July and meet the requirement or satisfy the needs of the moment. That's the big issue here. Can you satisfy the needs of the moment? I mean, because you're going to have to bring these kids, and you can't just line them up on one day and say, okay, here we go. You're going to have to host them. You're going to have to keep them quarantined somewhere. If you're going to work out together, I mean, you're going to have to be tested before you put everybody together. You're going to probably have to be tested during the event, after the event. What's the testing requirement going to be on that? And that's the question that hopefully college football can answer or at least have a a direction once we get closer to kickoff. 
once we get closer to the start of the season, what's the testing regiment going to look like? What's the requirements going to look like? Because, again, we're getting to a point where we are bringing in outside entities into the college arena. In this case, the stadium. You're traveling to an outside entity, and then you're bringing someone in from outside. And will their testing be up to par? That's the question. Are those kids, have they been tested properly? Are they healthy? Is it safe for them to be on the field? Is it safe for you to be on the field? Those are the questions. And, of course, on the high school level, you can't necessarily overcome that. NASCAR, they got a good thing going right now if they can stay healthy. The drivers, for the most part, are away from everybody on race day. The pit crews, they're working closer together, but still, they're being tested. They're not necessarily interacting with other entities, sort of self-contained. It seems to be working so far. We don't know what's going to happen here in the next few weeks, if there's going to be an uptick or we're going to have some cases in NASCAR of, of the virus. Don't know. And that's the dilemma right now, especially with all the other sports. And I think NASCAR, sort of NASCAR has been the, okay, let's see how this works. Let's see how this works in in this setting. And can what they're doing be applied elsewhere? Can it be applied to an arena sport like the NBA or the NHL? Can it be applied to that? For college football, completely different. Of all the sports, probably the most contact. You have larger amounts of players, and the dilemma here is health and safety and well-being of the student-athlete and the desire to have some sort of college football season to maintain some semblance of revenue coming in to support everything else. In a nutshell, that seems to be the dilemma. Jared West joins me later on the program. We'll get your phone calls in as well. You can also find me on social media. Today, we're going to hit the Facebook page. Hit me up on Facebook, The Drive with Paul Swan. Find us there. We post the podcast links all the time. And, of course, that's a great place for you to interact with me. You can comment on the show. Anytime we post it, it's right there for you. Take advantage of it. The Drive with Paul Swan on Facebook. More on the way. It is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Still to come, Jared West, Marshall basketball player, returning to the Thundering Herd after testing the waters. After he declared himself eligible for the 2020 NBA Draft. We'll talk to him in about five, six minutes or so on the program after our next break to kind of get his feeling on what happened, what he got out of it, and what was taken away from him during this pandemic. So that's all still to come here on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. And here's a young man who's also in limbo right now. The only players that are eligible to come back on campus, as I understand it right now, at least at Marshall, are the football players. The football players are the only kids who have that opportunity, as I understand it. Of course, it'll be opened up, I'm sure, later for basketball and the other student-athletes. And I'm okay with that reserved attitude of, okay, let's get football in because their season is going to happen sooner than basketball. And there's a lot of heavy lifting going on with football. The logistics are a little bit more. The facilities and everything that goes into it, probably a little bit more involved. Not to say that basketball is not, but you've got way more student-athletes to keep an eye on and to maintain and to try to keep in a situation where it's safe for them, it's a safe environment, and you can bring basketball and the other sports on as you feel comfortable in doing that. Jared probably won't know too much about that, so we'll leave that be for another time. But we're going to talk to Jared here in the next few minutes, talk about his adventures and um, what he got out of this experience so far and what he would have liked to have got out of it. 
unfortunately denied many opportunities, I'm sure, due to the pandemic. But at the same time, we knew he was putting his name out there to put himself out there in front, get himself in a few people's face, figuratively speaking, of course, and just get on the radar, get into a spot where people know who he is or they see him coming. They start exploring who this young man is a little bit more. Okay, what's this kid about? What can he do? Is he NBA ready? Can he make it to the next level? I mean, this is basically an expedition for Jared of sorts. And Jared's competitor, he's coming back. He's got more action in store for you, I'm sure, at the Cam Anderson Center. If, when we get to at least play some basketball and whatever that looks like here in the future. All right, I'll tell you what. I want to get Jared on. I don't want to have him waiting around too long. So I'm going to go ahead, get our next break in. And following the break in the news update, we will come back. Jared West will join me. We'll talk about his adventures in and out of the NBA draft when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So we got the word earlier today that Marshall men's basketball guard Jared West announcing that he's returning to Marshall for his senior season. He's removing his name from the 2020 NBA draft. And Jared West joins us on the program. How you doing, brothers? Good talking to you again. What's up, Paul? How you doing, man? I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me. I appreciate you doing this again today. So um, the good news is you're coming back to Marshall for a lot of fans. Uh, I'm sure they're excited and happy to have you back. The question to me, though, is um, with everything that's been going on, I I guess I'm curious. You put your name in for the NBA draft, and it was an opportunity for you to to expose yourself, to to learn, to, to to find out what the process is all about. What did you get to take away from this experience in the middle of a pandemic? Um, Obviously it was, it was tough during this time. Um, You know, no public visitation, no face-to-face meeting, no workouts, no anything like that. So it was definitely, it made the experience a little bit tougher and a little bit harder, but at the same time, I was just very blessed and grateful for the opportunity to put my name in the draft. Um, You know, I thought it was a good opportunity to get my name out there a little bit more and just try to, and see what good can come out of it. I didn't think it could hurt in any way. But, um, you know, it was, it was a, I enjoyed the process. I was just glad that I could put my name in and kind of go through everything. With, and, um, you know, I just feel like now is a good time to take my name out and let everybody know that I'll come back to school. What's the thing that's uh, most disappointing about the experience? And I know you're, you're a pretty positive guy, but is there something that, especially was hard hitting for you that you didn't maybe get a chance to, to take advantage of the way you would have, if this was not a, um, a situation where we had to practice social distancing and, and everything that goes with that. Um, honestly, what I was most looking forward to was the workout. You know, I, I love to compete. I love to, you know, get in the gym and be able to play against the best and compete against the best. And I feel like that would be probably the, the thing that I missed out most on. Um, I feel like that would have been fun to <laughs> compete against some of the best guys out there and kind of see where I'm at. And at the same time, I compete in front of um, you know, some important guys, maybe some GMs, some trainers or whatever that can um, give me some information, insight back, or anything that they can do to help my game. You know, any type of workout setting or um, anything like that where we can play and the guys can critique my game. That's the that's the most important thing because it's always about getting better and trying to better your game and better yourself in any way. Um, so I feel like that's probably the most important Thing about the whole thing that I that I missed about it was uh, probably you know like this the face to face interaction with um, you know as far as competing and workouts go. Was it a lot of trading tape or just mostly interviews? Yeah, how did that process go for you? Um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't get much like uh, information that that way or anything like that because without the meetings and the, um, like the visitation and stuff like that, there probably there wasn't really much to discuss honestly because we can't schedule work and things like that and you know the new season still being postponed. Um, you know, their guys are still their priority. So um right it, it was it's tough honestly from that regard because they still have to prioritize their guys, 
make sure their guys are safe and everything like that. So um, I didn't really get much, um, you know, uh, interaction with any coaches or GMs or anything like that. So, but I'm like I said, I'm still grateful for the opportunity and the, and the uh, blessing just to get my name in the draft. Marshall Basketball's Jared West joining us on the program. How are you holding up? I mean, you've got to stay in basketball shape. You're trying to get ready for a season, and you're severely limited. So what's your process like? We're a couple months into this now. Um, I'm doing pretty well. The most important thing is just uh, trying to stay in shape and everything like that. It's easy in times like these when you don't have a lot of access to gyms and stuff like that to kind of just sit around and get out of shape pretty easy. But, um, you know, the most important thing for me is just making sure I stay in shape, make sure my body is in good shape. Um, I stay tight. I'm trying to do as many body weight workouts as possible. And, um, you know, I'm actually kind of lucky and fortunate that I have access to a gym back here. Um, one of my family friends lets me use there. So I'm blessed from that standpoint, and I've been trying to use it as much as possible. So um, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to maximize my resources um, with the ones I have and, you know, just trying to better myself as much as I can. What's the structure like for you? Because, again, everything's been so limited, limited access to resources, limited access to to coaches, limited everything, and it's on you. Now, that's not an issue for you. I know you well enough. You, know, you don't need the extra motivation. You motivate yourself, and you do it well. But you know, what's the regiment like for you? Are you just basically falling back on things you know to do, or are you trying to – add some different things in. How, how do you manage that? Um, A lot of what I do, I try to get up at a decent time. I normally wake up early by myself anyway, so I don't even really need an alarm a lot of times. But I try to get up pretty early, you know, just get out, get outside. And I've been doing a lot of running outside for the most part. I feel like that's something that I've been doing a lot of. Um, or just being outside, you know, jumping rope or running sprints or just running miles and stuff like that. Any type of conditioning I can do to make sure that I'm still staying in shape, kind of get my heart rate up a little bit and stuff like that, break a little sweat. Um, I always go to the gym at some point, whether I'm just getting shot or I'm working out with my dad or my brother or whatever the case may be. Um, I try to get in the gym pretty much every day. Um, I, I've been resting a little bit, not trying to kill myself. But, um, you know, I've been trying to stay in the gym at least um, every day for the most part making sure I'm staying outside, running, staying in shape and stuff like that, um, competing against my brother and everything. So um, for the most part, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, ever since school ended, the start, the, I haven't really been doing anything besides working out. So <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that, and that's, that's consistent most of my day. Jared West is with us, making the announcement that he is taking his name out of consideration for the 2020 draft, and he'll return to Marshall which I'm sure made a lot of herd fans happy. I'm sure it made your coach happy to have you back because, I mean, let's be honest. So, what's he going to do out there without you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I I hope I made a lot of uh, Marshall fans excited. I'm really excited to get back this year. You know, we got a lot of high expectations for us. Um, coach Dan has a lot of high expectations for us as well. We're very confident in what we have bringing to bringing back this year to the team and. The new guys coming in, we feel like we got a chance to really make a run at it this year. And um, at the end of the day, that's the ultimate goal. So we're going to get back to work as soon as we can and um, try to reach that goal. I don't want to say it's a blessing in disguise, but the opportunity for you to make a run was taken away from you. And it feels like instead of putting your heads down, this team is looking at this like, okay, that was stolen from us. Now we're going to go get it and, and prove that we were hot at the right time, not just yeah you know, flash in the pan at the tournament, that th- we're going to carry this on to the next season and watch out for the herd. Yeah, it was a, it was a very bittersweet time um, after all this stuff went down because it was good because we had the season on a win, obviously. But, um, and we felt like we were gelling at the right time and coming together at the right time. But at the same time, we felt like we had a, another couple of games in us that week. And um, we thought we really had a chance to make some noise. And, um, you know, just kind of show everybody that we're gelling at the right time and playing well at the right time. At the end of the day, in March, that's what it's about, playing at the right time. We felt like we were doing that, and we had a, a real good shot. I won in the conference tournament to get back to the state tournament. And at the, end, at the end of the day, that's the ultimate goal. So um, we definitely have a better taste in our mouth, and we're going to use that as motivation throughout the rest of the summer and in the preseason. And hopefully when we get back to the court, we can show everybody that, uh, you know, we're still here and that we, we're here to make some noise.
No, we don't know when that's going to be, when you're going to get back to the court. You know, we're still up in the air with that. But yeah, there's nothing keeping you and your teammates from talking to each other, going back and forth, giving each other support. Who's the ringleader of that? Are you still the leader in charge of that? Are, are, you, are you texting Tavia on, hey, work on your dunk? Or are you talk, tech, talk to Jansen saying, hey, work on your three-pointer, come on, you know, you know, get out there, shoot 100? I mean, you know, how's that organized? Are you, are you the ringleader? Uh, probably so in that regard. I probably did the most talking within the team. I try to, you know, every once in a while, I don't want to bother them or anything like that, but every, every now and then just kind of hit them up, get them going and, you know, trying to make, motivate them a little bit and see how they're doing and see what they have access to and things like that. It, it, it was really hard early on because, you know, a lot of guys, I, I remember talking to Darius and Andrew and Tavion, they didn't have access to a gym, even a park, honestly, for, um, a lot of the time, so I know it was tough for them to kind of just get some shots up unless they had a, a basket at their house. But, um, you know, I've been trying to keep in touch with everybody, seeing how everybody's doing and everything. Um, obviously, we should all be very well rested, but at the same time, we should be um, trying to make the most of what we have and the resources that we can to make sure we still get better. What's the direction, if you can share, if any's given to you as far as when you might be able to get back to voluntary workouts on campus and, and everything that goes into that, you know, if you can share what what's the direction, if any. And honestly, there, there's not much that we know right now. Um, I would say the earliest is probably you know early to mid July, but like I said, I don't know the answers. I, I don't think anyone really does know the answers or has the answers. It's it's tough right now. Um, like I said, I'm just I'm trying to stay positive about the whole situation, and hopefully in the near future, um, we'll have a vaccine or a cure. Um, we'll have more testing, and we'll just you know hopefully we'll be able to just get back on campus and be with the team, so we can get back in the gym and get back to work. Jared West is with us. The announcement today is uh, he is returning to Marshall, taking his name out of the hat for the 2020 NBA draft, and of course, you're keeping busy. You're trying to stay in shape, getting ready for the basketball season coming up. And at the same time, uh, I'm sure you're – are you giving your dad some pointers because they're still going to try to play the basketball tournament? And you know, they did okay last time they were in this tournament. Are you helping him out a little bit? <laughs> oh, we talk a little bit about it. Uh, I, I, I think he's got it under control and got it handled. Um, obviously, he, he, he'll ask for my insight, uh, insight every now and then. And um, I'll tell him how I feel and give him my honest opinion. But for the most part, he does a pretty good job. I think it's going to be uh, – a competitive tournament still. I think there's a lot of good teams in the field. And, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be easy for anyone. I know Ohio State won it last year, but I think it's, they're still going to have a tough road to, you know, go back to back and everything. So, but, I, you know, we talk about it a little bit. I know he's asked me a couple things, but for the most part, he's kind of got it under control. Okay. I'm putting you on the spot here, but I'm giving you a heads <laughs> up, putting you on the spot. Best Virginia. Heard that mm-hmm. they meet on the court. Yeah, are you are you pumping inside information over to your your dad? Are are you you talking to Elmore and Elmore and going, oh, hey, this is what you need to watch out for? Or are you as far as way as possible from the court, sitting in the center somewhere? I'm gonna stay as neutral as possible if that situation ever comes around. However, I am a little biased toward my dad because. There's a lot of money involved, and when the money is involved, you know that means it's coming to our family. So that's that's good for me. <laughs> but um, you know, I don't want to root against uh, John and Steve and all of them because I like those guys and I play with a lot of them and stuff like that. And uh, we have a close relationship. I have a close relationship with those guys. And obviously, my dad is coaching Best Virginia, and um, you know, he's my dad. So it's uh. That's a tough one. That's a tough one for sure. I'll try to see as neutral as possible. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably be a little biased for my dad, not because of West Virginia, but because he's my dad. So, Jared West joining us on the program. Uh, I don't know how, uh, how up-to-date you are, but they're looking at maybe having one tournament site now instead of having the, uh, the, the hub site. Charleston's name still in the mix as far as being the destination, but – I know that kind of throws a a damper on everything because it was in part really to the support that your dad's team got and a lot of West Virginia basketball fans in general really supporting this tournament that brought it to Charleston in the first place. So I'm sure 
yeah, this is going to be a different dynamic. You kind of thought, okay, we've got home court advantage here in this tournament, and maybe you don't now. Yeah, I was I was really looking forward to it being in Charleston, like um, short trip. Um, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, not just West Virginia fans. I feel like there's going to be a lot of Marshall fans in the gym as well. Um, I feel like it was going to be. I feel I feel like both teams are going to have a a really big fan base. I feel like they were going to bring a really good crowd and. Uh, you know, that was probably going to be the most interesting thing, in my opinion. I feel like, you know, this, the Civic Center obviously sees a lot, but I feel like um, in a lot of those games, I feel like it would be close to, to full, depending on how the seating arrangements were and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, the home court definitely, I feel like, plays a factor. And watching the game, uh, especially last year, I feel like that definitely played a factor in it. So it's going to be different. It'll be adjustment for all the teams, I think, however, but, you know, at the end of the day, you got you got to play and you got to bring it to the table every game. So it's going to be a tough uh, week and a half or two weeks for all of those teams. But I think it's still going to be a fun. Game. As a player yourself, how hard do you think it's going to be to to get ready for that tournament and know that when you get on the court, you might be the only people on the court. There might not be that many fans of any in the stands to, due to whatever restrictions are going to be put in place to, to pull this thing off. But how just hard is that to, to get up for a game? You bring your own energy, you get out there, and there's and it's it. You, whatever you brought with you better get you through it. Yeah, that, that would be tough, honestly. It, that, that would be hard playing in front of um, no fans like a club. Um, however, I, just think, I still think it would be very competitive. And I still think it would be fun because you get to play basketball. But I know the atmosphere and uh, the crowd, I feel like that makes it a lot more fun, honestly, wherever you go. You know, I, I actually kind of like playing on the road, going um, to other teams' gyms with hostile environments. You know, Western Kentucky is my favorite place to play. So um, I know the crowd and the atmosphere, that, that makes the game a lot of fun. So I, I definitely think it would be tough to play with no fans. But at the same time, you know, all these guys, it's their job to play basketball, um, especially if there's money on the line. I think, I think they'll be ready to play. <laughs> Jared West, with the correct answer, there's money on the line. I mean, come on. I, I, I'm with you there. <laughs> I mean, if, if, it's, yeah. if it's me and a couple mil and my best friends, uh, it's me and a couple mil. I get it. I'm completely with you, under 100 percent on that. So uh, I'll be rooting for yeah. you. Yeah, I'll be rooting for you and your dad for that regard. And um, <laughs> Ho- hopefully we can get this thing off. But uh, hey, good talking to you again. I really appreciate you. I know it's been tough for you and trying to get everything in order and still be a student and still be an athlete. And you know, I just appreciate you, man, coming on. And uh, hopefully we can talk some actual basketball with you soon. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. There you have it. It's Jared West. Appreciate him coming on the program. Uh, we're going to take our next break. Come back. We'll get your phone calls in 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. That, the Miller Lite phone line, when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Wednesday, May 27th edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Don't forget, if you miss any part of today's show, you miss any part of any show, all you have to do is subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast. Also on Spotify, we're on Stitcher Radio, we're on TuneIn. Any way you get your podcast is where you find our show. And you can listen to episodes daily throughout the week. Go back and catch a past episode, or if you can't listen live, you listen on the podcast, same great content, just commercial free for the time being, at least anyway, on the podcast. All you have to do is go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to start getting the podcast delivered directly to you every single day. So it's another day without sports, but we do have racing, racing happening, and NASCAR right now definitely taking advantage of the situation from the standpoint that they've got product, they've got live sports, and we've got NASCAR Cup Series action tonight. The Alsco Uniforms 500, i got to work and make sure I say that right, or MRN's Jason Toy will bust through the door as we speak. 
Charlotte Motor Speedway is coming up tonight, and I believe that is going to be also over on our sister station, Big Buck Country 101.5. Check out the website. Also, their Facebook page, Jason Updates NASCAR, like it's like it's his business, like it's his job on our social media pages. So you can follow along there. And also, you can stream the race. So if you can't get yourself to a radio, you, you want to listen to the race, all you have to do is is go to his website and get the Alexa app. And get ours as well, wrvc.com. Get our app. It's real simple. We've got the link there for you, wrvc.com. Enable that skill, and then all you have to do is tell your Echo, your Alexa, just say, Alexa, play ESPN 94.1. And then she'll load the station for you. There's a hidden skill, and it's getting better. It's a hidden skill with our app. It's It doesn't update as fast as going and getting it directly. But if that's not an issue for you, you, you just ask our skill to play our podcast. It's real simple. You Once you enable the skill, you just go, Alexa. Ask ESPN 94.1 to play the drive, and she'll pull the podcast up. Now, again, if you get it through Apple Podcasts or some other way, that's probably going to be a quicker way for you, but this is also another way for you to listen to the show. So if you can't listen to it live and you can't download it on your your phone, you have an Amazon Echo device, and that's another option for you as well. So you can listen to the show any way you want to, but you start at our website, wrvc.com. Dot com And, of course, coming up again tonight, we've got NASCAR action on our sister station, Big Buck Country 101.5. We've got, we've got baseball action coming up tonight. It's Pirates Classic action again. And I don't know if you've been listening to these games. They started with some World Series action from the Pirates, and they're updating the schedule weekly with games. And we're going to start posting that on our website here a little bit better than we're doing. Coming up tonight, we have got Andrew McCutcheon's walk-off homer in the 14th. It's a game from July 11, 2015 versus St. Louis. So that's our matchup coming up tonight, 8 o'clock. You can listen to that. So if you want to go back in the Wayback Machine, 8 o'clock tonight, you can listen to that. You can stream it as well. We are cleared to do that. And then coming up June 1st, we have got... From July 12, 2015, again versus St. Louis, back-to-back walk-off wins over the cards heading into the All-Star break. If I remember correctly, they were down 5-3 to three in the 10th. Now, the next game that I can tell you about, because we get this update weekly, is on June 3rd, and that'll take you back to October 6, 2013. There's a theme here against St. Louis. In it's Game 3 of the NLDS back in 2013, as I mentioned, Pirates take a 2-1 lead in the Best of 5 series with a 5-3 win at PNC Park. So all of that's coming up Mondays and Wednesdays. You can listen to those games 8 o'clock until we get baseball back. I'm hoping we get to do this for the foreseeable future, but not that much of a future as we hopefully will get a plan back for baseball eventually. We're not going to get hockey back until July. If July, maybe August, I'm hoping it's if they're going to be able to do this and they can do it correctly, I'm hoping we get it in July, late July, mid-July, I don't know. Same thing with the NBA. I'm hoping we can get that back sooner than later. Baseball, I have no idea what they're going to be able to do. So no clue, no concept there just yet. And, of course, we're still going to be in limbo with the NFL, but we've got a few months on that. Same thing with college football. Right now, we've got NASCAR. We've got some soccer overseas. We've got some baseball overseas. That's it. That's all I can think of. 
That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Special guest, Jared West. Thank him for coming on the program. I appreciate him. And, of course, special thanks to Cody Lynn over at Marshall University for facilitating that. Appreciate his efforts and always helping us book guests. That's going to do it. Back tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.